to show you the tools panel, I'm going to start off with a fresh new project. So to follow along, just start a new project and we can just work our way from there. The first thing I'm going to do in the tools menu is create a new frame. And this frame tool is used to create new artboards and also to frame certain sections like a navigation menu bar or an iPhone navigation footer. To start off, you can see here on the right, we have different presets for frames that we want to create. So I can create an iPhone X frame, for example, here, and I can just click on that and it'll plop that directly in the canvas. Or if I click on this frame tool, I can drag and create a custom frame size at whatever size that I want. I'm going to delete this frame and let's just keep this iPhone X frame as we move along. Now to select any objects, you have this move tool, this move and select. So now I can click on the name of this frame and I can move it. Now I want to create a few shapes. So here's where you'll find your shapes. I can quickly draw some rectangles here. And if I click on this drop down arrow, I have more shape options. So here I can draw an ellipse and I can hold down shift to constrain this proportionally. And I'll just drag this around. And we have a few of these other ones, star tool, polygon, ellipse. I'll just place these ones for now. Now I can also scale these objects. If I have this circle, for example, I can click on this down arrow next to the move tool and I can click on this scale tool and I can just drag any one of these drag handles and scale this down or up as I see fit. Now those are great for simple shapes and I'm going to just select both of these and drag them up a little bit. But I can also create custom shapes using this pen tool. For example, if I want to quickly create a shape of a heart, let's say, I can do that here. And I'll show you more how to use con these controls to create your own shapes. I'm just drawing something quick to show you where these tools live and kind of how they work. And you can see here when we're inside the pen tool, we have other options here too. So we can use this paint bucket tool, for example, to click and paint a certain color inside of that stroke or that shape. And we can also use this bend tool to select certain nodes and bend the shape. If you want to design something more free form, like a signature, for example, you can use this down arrow and select the pencil tool. But before I do that, I'm just going to click done here because I don't want to create the same shape inside of this edited instance. So now I'm going to click on this down arrow and click on the pencil tool and here's where I can create a quick signature and I'm using a mouse so it's kind of messy but you can see how free form that is and now when you double click inside of here you can still use these nodes to edit and clean up the paths here. Now you'll find a basic text tool and this is where you can add different text so you can add a navigation for example and Another thing you can do with the text tool is instead of clicking to add some text, you can click and drag to create a bounding box that your text is going to wrap and live inside of. Next, we have the comment tool. And this comment tool is really powerful because you can share your designs with anybody on the web. They don't have to install anything and they can quickly jump in and start commenting on your designs here. So they can click on any area here and say, this circle needs some color. And as soon as they click post, I'll be notified of that and I can have a conversation directly in here and I can hover over this to refer back to this conversation. And now if I ever add some color, I can just click this resolve and it'll archive that conversation so I don't need to see it unless I pull up my archived conversation. So it's really nice. Now this center area right here is only showing the name of the file right now, which is untitled. This is where you can rename your file and you can also jump into version history to see what's been going on through different versions. So if I click show version history, you can see what it looks like at 4.16 p.m. or the current version. And I haven't done much in here, so there's not many versions, but this is where you'll find 5, 10, or 15 different versions throughout the last 30 days. Now if I click back to editing here, I can click back on this drop down arrow. I can duplicate this file. I can delete this or jump back into my files or move this file to a certain project. So that's where you'll find the controls for your file. But watch what happens when I click on this circle. All of a sudden I have some contextual options that allow me to edit this circle specifically. 
So if you hover over this, this is the option for editing an object. So if I click inside of here, it'll show me the nodes and here's where I can drag some of these nodes around and edit the object. I can click done here or I can reset the instance. Now this is grayed out because this only applies to components, which we're going to talk about later. But let's say I create a component here and this component's created. I'm going to just hold down option and copy this master component and that creates a child component. And again, I'm gonna talk more about how this works in a later video. But now let's say I choose this color to be red and I choose this color to be blue. Well, because this is a child component of this master component, I can click inside of here and I can say, I wanna reset this instance to match the master component. And that's what that does here. Now, if you wanna mask any shapes with any other shapes or mask a shape with an image, you can do this here. And I'll show you how this works by adding an image real quick and we'll mask that with this shape here. So we can go into the shapes tool, click on place image, and now if you visit the assets folder under the exercise files, you can click on any one of these images or just find an image on your computer to upload here. It doesn't matter which image. So I'm going to click open and now it's going to ask me where I want to place this and watch this. If I hover over this circle, it'll place the image and mask it inside of here or here or this shape. But to maintain some masking control, what I'm going to do is just click outside of any of these and just click somewhere out of the canvas randomly. And now that we have this image in place, I can click on the image and resize this holding down shift. And I can resize it to fit somewhat within this rectangle behind it. And now I'm gonna hold down Z and drag a rectangle to zoom in here. And after I zoom in, I can select this rectangle, hold down shift and select the image. And now I can click on this use as mask tool. And now this rectangle behind the image is purely a mask that's masking the image above this. So I can still click on this image layer. I can do some resizing within here and move it around to exactly where I want. And it'll always be masked within this rectangle. Now I wanna show you the Boolean tool. And in order to do that, I'm just going to select everything that I have here and just hit delete. And here I'm just going to zoom in holding down the Z key and I'll just drag a rectangle right here. And now I can add some different shapes here like a rectangle and a circle. And now I'm going to change the color of this one so you can kind of see which one's on top of each other. Now using this Boolean tool or this union selection, I can select two of these shapes here and I can click union and that creates one shape where I can change the color of this one shape. I can manipulate this as if it's one but this Boolean effect creates icons that are non-destructive so I can still double click inside of here and I can move this around and manipulate this shape to, for example, be wider and centered within this square. So you see you can create some great shapes using some simple squares and circles. Now if I right click and ungroup here, that will undo that change that I made and I can still select both of these and here I can choose to subtract the one that's in front from the one that's behind. And so now you can see that it kind of behaves as a cookie cutter. Holding down Command Z, I can undo this. And now I can intersect the selection. So anything that's intersected in between these two shapes, it's going to keep. And excluding the selection retains the shape above here and the shape down here. And anything that's intersecting, it kind of just subtracts that. Now you've seen so far that we have non-destructive editing where I can still move this around and it still retains the exclude feature. But what happens if I wanna bake this in now and do some further editing? So this acts like one image. It is two different shapes. I can go in here after I've edited everything and combined my shapes. I can choose to flatten selection. And what that does now is it adds this as one single shape. So now when I double click inside of here, you can see that I can edit the nodes inside of here. And now I can't just grab this circle and move it like I was able to, but now I'm able to do some more advanced techniques to kind of tweak the shape that I want. The last tool I wanna to show you is the crop image. So again, I'm gonna go into the shapes tool, click on place image, and I'll grab one of these shapes again. And once I place this here, I can place it like I have before, or I can click and drag 
a rectangle and I can drag this to be the size that I want rather than just clicking it and have it place as the original size. So now I can click on this crop image here and it gives me these nice crop marks where I can choose to compose this image in whatever kind of frame that I want. And once I hit return, that's now cropped. Now if I double click inside of here, I can do that same masking technique. And if I resize this, it kind of skews the image within this cropped area. Now those are all the object menus. And lastly to the right, we can see more options in the tools panel. One of them is it's showing my name Caleb here because I'm actually logged in with two computers. So even though I'm using my same account, if I'm logged in twice, it'll show, hey, Caleb's here in another computer too. So if you have three or four or five people working on this project, you're gonna see those three, four or five icons here. And you can click on one of those icons to actually see that other user's mouse and follow where they're designing. Now, if you wanna share this project with anybody else, you can click this share icon and you can share this by just copying a link or even embedding a code inside of a blog for people to interact with your designs within a blog like WordPress. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the present feature in a prototype video, but if I click on this, I get a nice preview of my design. And if I've prototyped this, I can click through to interact with my design. You can see that this present mode actually opens up in a new tab here. So I can still toggle back and edit a few things like move this over and jump back into the present mode and see that that changes live. Or I can just close it this way and jump back in at any time here. If I wanna jump into my view settings, I can choose to toggle some pixel preview, pixel grid, layout grids. So these are a few quick view options that you'll get here in the view menu as well. And to the right, it shows you a few shortcuts to toggle these views on and off. Now, if you don't wanna hold down Z to draw a rectangle to zoom in a certain area, or if you don't want to hold down command to zoom in and out, you can choose some precise zoom controls by clicking on this arrow here and jumping to 0% or 50%. And there's also some shortcuts here that you can use like the equal sign or the subtract sign to zoom in and out. Or if you want to zoom to fit, you just tap one or zero for 100%. The last tool in the tools panel is this export assets tool. And you can see that it shows zero out of zero selected that I can't export anything. And that's because before you export anything, you have to actually select these objects and make them exportable and decide what format you want to export them in. So now that I clicked on that to make exportable, let's say we have two or three or four different objects. I'm just going to add another circle here and I'll make this exportable as well. So we have two exportable objects now and you can click on this export and you can see these two layers and it's going to export both of them as a PNG. Now you don't have the option to name these objects that are being exported in the export panel, but if you want this file to be named something differently, you can click on it here and just double click to change the name right here. And you can name this cake, for example. If you jump back in here, you can see that that's named differently.